Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Mondays with Meeks. We're here in the Health Science Center and uh, we're about to head over to the Medical Assisting Program, uh, check out what they've got going on and, and, and a cool demonstration. But before we jump into that, I wanna give you guys a quick financial aid update. Uh, we, our department in the next couple of weeks are going to start processing financial aid applications for the, for the upcoming 21-22 school year. So if you've done your FAFSA uh, for, for fall 2021, then you should be looking for something in the mail and, and in your email in the next couple of weeks, uh, letting you know what we need to complete your file so you can jump ahead and be ready to go next fall whenever school starts. Uh, so be looking out for that. Um, but uh, without further ado, we're gonna run over to medical assisting and, and check out what's going on over there. Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Mondays with Meeks. Uh, before we get started, we got screened at the door, uh, no COVID symptoms, and we're practicing safe social distancing. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into the medical assisting program today. Uh, we're here in the medical assisting uh, lecture slash lab classroom. I'm here with Amanda Booth and Jennifer Benson. Uh, they are two of the program instructors for medical assisting. And so thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you for having so, the, the question really is, what is medical assisting? Okay, so when we talk about medical assisting, we're, we're kind of thinking of it as an umbrella term, okay? We're gonna to touch on three different areas. We're gonna to touch in on our admin area, our, our clinical area, as well as phlebotomy. Uh, with the admin area, we are training students to be able to take care of billing, scheduling, insurance, coding, and then we kind of, slide into the next era that's kind of in between the clinical and admin area and that's going to be our scribe class our scribe is still kind of dealing with the admin stuff but it's also going clinical too that's where they actually train to uh, record what's going on between doctor and patient which would lead us to our clinical portion of the program so our clinical portion includes teaching the hands-on skills that they will need while assisting the provider in the doctor's office we teach patients things like pap smears, assisting the provider with pap smears. We teach students how to perform EKGs, audiometry. We teach the students how to perform a variety of uh, minor surgery is another one. So whatever the doctor needs as far as assistance in the exam room. We also teach the students an additional portion as Ms. Vinton stated, phlebotomy. So this gives the students the opportunity to select which area they feel most comfortable in, whether it be administrative, some students are excel at that. Some students love the hands-on skills in the clinical and assisting the provider. And sometimes the students will actually like phlebotomy where they're drawing blood, working with needles, collecting uh, specimens, both blood and non-blood specimens. That's awesome. And, and speaking of phlebotomy, we did an awesome phle phlebotomy episode uh, on Mondays with Meeks uh, not too long ago. Feel free to check that out on, on Facebook and YouTube. Um, and then we're actually gonna move into a demonstration for you guys. Uh, I'm going to be performing an injection into a brave uh, Amanda Booth here. So stay tuned for that and wish me luck. <laughs> All right, so guys, we've moved on to the demonstration portion of this week's episode. And uh, so Ms. Booth, can you actually tell everybody what we're gonna do? So one of the things that we teach students in the medical assisting program is how to do a TB test. A TB test is important to make sure that somebody doesn't have, they haven't been um, exposed to tuberculosis. Okay. So this does require doing the, demos or the um, procedure with a tuberculin syringe and your um, formula, uh, medicine that you would be introducing. You need alcohol, gauze, and your sharps container. Okay. What we need to do start off first with is if you don't mind, we always make sure our hands are clean. Right. And then we always wanna wear gloves when touching our patients. Even putting the glove on is harder than it looks, guys. Do you teach this in your class? Yes, we actually <laughs> do teach the students how to put on gloves properly and how to remove them properly. I imagine it would make patients nervous if you can't even get your glove on right. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, now okay. that he has looks perfect. Now that he has his gloves on, one of the most important things that we need to do, since we are using a multi-dose vial, we're only introducing saline, so please don't think that this is actual medication. <laughs> we need to wipe the top of our multi-dose vial off because at any time using a multi-dose, we can actually reintroduce microorganisms into our medication. So we wanna avoid that. We need this procedure to be as sterile as possible. Is there a certain technique? You just wipe the top off. Good. Okay. Now that we have our um, vial cleaned, go ahead and grab your tuberculin syringe. The tuberculin syringe is very tiny. It is actually just a very small needle. It's 25 gauge 5.8, so it's not going to cause a lot of pain. Okay, I need you to go ahead and pull up. We are going to administer 0.1, so you need to pull back 0.1 in air. The reason we do this is because it introduces air into the vial, which will create pressure to pull the medication in. Okay, remove the lid and go ahead and put the lid right there. It serves as a docking station. Okay. Okay, go ahead and introduce the air into your vial. So I, okay. so I push it? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, now holding your uh, vial upside down, making sure that your needle is submerged under the liquid, pull up to 0.1 in liquid. We wanna avoid trying to pull back too quickly. We don't want air bubbles that unfortunately does take away from the medication space. Okay, how does that look to you? Uh, push up just a little bit. I see a bubble right there. Okay. Okay, good. That looks good. Okay. okay. Go ahead and place it into its cradle for now. Okay. So now prepping the patient's arm. Whenever we perform this procedure, what you want to do is avoid going in the AC area and we want to avoid the wrist. So place your hand here and here. Okay. So one hand here, one hand there. Okay. And we tell the Students, that this is the area that we will work with. We want to avoid going into any veins. So this is your targeted area, determining where is a good clear space with zero veins. Okay. okay. Once you have determined an area, go ahead and grab your alcohol swab, and you will clean the intended site in a concentric circle, pushing away the microorganisms at least two centimeters beyond the point of insertion. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and let this area dry for just a moment. Okay. And we don't actually want to fan the site. So I'm glad you did that. Students technically want to. What happens is we reintroduce microorganisms okay. to the site. So go ahead and wipe it down again. Perfect. You can just wipe it down really quick. Sorry, guys. Okay. Perfect. Okay, now we'll go ahead and let that dry. Without fanning. Now the angle <laughs> that you will have to perform this is, is in a 10 to 15 degree angle. So okay. that means you will have to be very shallow on the skin. So go ahead and grab your syringe. Okay. The way you want to hold this is you want to hold it as if you're pinching something, you're trying to keep it away from your body. The reason we do that is because we don't want to increase the angle. Now, whenever you go to perform this, you do have to anchor the skin. So okay. with your other hand, you will pull down. Okay. You don't want to just stab. Okay. So, so that right here, okay. pulling down. Okay. And any of this area is game, 10 to 15 degrees. So let's come right about right here. Okay, and you want to make sure okay. that the bevel is skyward on the needle, so okay. the opening of the needle skyward. Okay. okay, go ahead and bring your hand down. What you want to do is, this is like picking a sticker out, so a little more shallow coming down. Okay, okay so anchor a little bit more, pull with your thumb just a little bit more, okay. and then go ahead and insert the needle. What you want to do is you want to be able to see the needle right underneath the skin. That's perfect. Okay. With this hand, now go ahead and inject your fluid. What we're trying to do is create a wheel of the medication underneath the skin. Sometimes we can actually go a little too deep, 
So we didn't get a wheel this time, but okay. you could still see a little bit of the raised area. Okay. Okay, what we want to instruct our patient to do, go ahead, ah, hang oh, on. Not yet, not yet, not yet. We go ahead and put it into the oh, sharps container. The we sharp never want to yes. recap our needle. Okay. okay. That's where we could actually end up with injuries. So once you create a wheel, what you want to instruct your patient not to do is put pressure on that. Okay. We want that liquid to naturally absorb by the body. If the patient truly has been exposed to tuberculosis, that will be, a, they will have a reaction to that. So it's just like an allergy test. Awesome. Okay. You did really well. Thank you. Did you hear that guys? With her awesome instruction, coaching me along the way, working me through my mistakes, I actually did okay. Um, so we want to thank both of you for being here today. Uh, if you guys want more information on the medical assisting program, um, we'll have a link in the video. Uh, check it out. Great program. Um, we look forward to seeing you guys. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you.